Does this 1911 make my butt look big? We've noticed a large percentage of our viewers have not subscribed. So if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Thanks for joining us on Shoot of the Series. I'm Ed Thorell, and we'd like to thank all of our uh, viewers for watching us and uh, helping us get good traction. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button as well as the like and the share. So the first rule of everyday carry is carry every day. The second rule is make sure that you've got a good gun belt that's going to support the weight of your pistol. Now, today I'm wearing a 1911 which most people are gonna think is the absolute top limit for carrying concealed because it's big, it's heavy, you never really forget that you're carrying an all steel pistol. And what we wanted to do today is talk about the importance of getting a good gun belt. Now, a lot of people that are fresh to EDC might make the mistake of just going with a normal fashion belt that they have in the closet. And some of the big pros and cons of that is the fact, yes, you may already have it, it's already bought and paid for, but something like this is not going to support the weight of, of a pistol um, because it just has no rigidity to it. There's a lot of flex there. You can see where this thing will taco, which means it's going to fold underneath the weight of the gun. So this is something I would recommend, you know, if you're just going out for a night and you're not going to be carrying a piece, you know, you're going to a pub or a bar where you're not supposed to carry anyway, this is fine. Um, but you're also going to find that there are belts that are made strictly for carrying a pistol. And probably I think when you once you buy a, a, a dedicated gun belt it's going to be your go-to for whether you're carrying or not and we'd like to thank our friends at Core Essentials for sending us um, a couple of examples of the belts that they offer and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running a couple of tests to see how the weight of the gun on the belt under load actually supports the weight of the pistol. One of the things I want to emphasize for this part of this demonstration is to show you how tight we can coil these belts and still be in their most relaxed state. One of the things you can easily see is the fashion belt with very little support is going to have the tightest coil when it's relaxed. The competitor's belt, you can get a coil of almost two complete wraps, and that's as relaxed as it's going to be. The Core Essentials belt, that's relaxed. So this gives you an idea of the rigidity of the belt under absolutely no load at all in its most relaxed state, as tight as you can make the coil. Now, another way of looking at this is the way it's packaged. Now, when, when, I, when I got the competitor's belt, it was sold in a, a tight coil package about six by six. Well, when we got the Core Essentials, its box was an eight by eight, and it filled up the box. That was about as tight as you could get it inside the box. Now, before we go any further in the testing, um, I wanna show that the 1911 is safe and clear. Drop in the mag, rack the slide, we're safe and clear, no big surprises. Now, what we want to do is put the 1911 in the holster onto the belts to see how rigid they will remain under load. And a 1911 for most people is as big as they would ever consider carrying. And for a lot of people, it's just considered too big for everyday carry. So the test that I want to perform is holding the gun with my hands about six inches away from the, uh, the gun itself. And I'm holding it pretty vertical. So we've got the weight of the gun cantilevered out and it's only supported by the actual belt itself. And all I'm doing is holding the belt at this point. And you can see this is good rigidity, the way it balances and holds the gun. The gun's not really going anywhere. All right, so. Core Essentials, belt number one for the test. Now, this would be one of the competitor's belts also on the market, 
and we're not naming names. We just want to do a demonstration to show the different types of materials that are available. Okay, I'm going to see if I can hold my hands out, see how far I can get my hands out before it starts to fold. And I'm only about three inches out, and you can see already the difference in the rigidity. If I hold it out six inches, it's just going to flop over. Okay, if I try the same thing with, with the, yeah, well, yeah, you can see me fighting it. And I may only be about four inches out. So the weight doesn't cantilever much. And to keep the gun straight up and down, you can see I've got to put quite a twist on it. All right, now, that's the competitor. Now, the last one is the fashion belt what most people have in their closet, what people might do the first time around when they uh, do an EDC and look, look at this. I mean, I, I, I can't. If I were to try to do it like this, hold it six inches out, look what happens. It's done. There's, there's no rigidity there at all. It just flops around. So any questions on rigidity and supporting the gun belt? For our next demonstration, we wanted to actually test the strength of the belt under pressure to show the thickness of the material and the rigidity of the material by placing each belt coiled up underneath a piece of glass with uh, some cinder blocks on top of it. So one of the things you can tell uh, about the fashion belt, because you can see it starting to bend or taco, that's not going to support the weight of the gun, which means the gun's going to drag all day long. You're not going to have the rigidity of getting a solid draw where the weight is supported if you actually need to use it. Now, the competitor's belt, it, it seems strong enough. It's, it's holding up well enough, but, but there's a certain softness to it. Um, and over time, you might see some sort of compression to where it's not supporting the gun as well as it could and you know over time that's that's a real consideration now you can also see from the core essentials belt that it's standing strong it's it's rock solid there's very little flex in this and i think this this gives me a lot more confidence when i'm wearing it that it's going to support the weight of the pistol and and do it for a long long time and be very very consistent about it so as you can see the fashion belt, it may be great for holding up your pants, but it's got a lot of twist. You can see there's a, not much rigidity there, and you can see how it's going to taco and not necessarily support the weight of the gun. So for everyday carry, this is a no-go. Now, the competitor's belt, it's, it's got some twist in it. It, it. it doesn't quite have the rigidity just because of the way it's uh, manufactured. It's, it's pretty stiff, it's okay, but when you, when you get to the core essentials, this doesn't have much twist in it. I'm, I'm actually really working this here to get that little bit of twist. And this is really gonna support the weight of the pistol really nicely um, even from the way it's constructed. They've really put a lot of time and effort into designing this so that it is going to stand up to support the weight of your pistol. So I want to take a minute to talk about some of the features that, that come with the Core Essential belt and, and start off by talking about the material itself. And, and from this particular view, you can easily see uh, that there is a solid core that runs through the entire length of the belt. And, and from here, you can also see how it's stitched, not just around the core, but through the core. And you can also see it from this side of the scrap, from the core belt that I'm wearing, that um, they're, not, they're not scrimping on the thread. The, uh, the, the, the actual core of the belt is, is physically attached and mechanically attached by being sewn into the belt itself. Now, a little bit more about the core belt is to explain that they also come with a track that's built into it. And these are a series of ratchets that allow you, 
once the belt is on that you can adjust this to size in quarter inch increments. And then it has a small release right here, which allows you to remove the belt or to change the adjustment. The core belts come in a 54 inch length and uh, they recommend that you take your waist size, add four inches, and then cut it to that measurement. And the nice thing about the core is they also have those measurements right on the back of the belt. So if you've got a 38, cut it to 42. This will also allow you extra room if you're carrying inside the waistband. Um, and use a heavy duty pair of scissors because you have to cut through that core to complete the cut. Now, let's talk a little bit about the, the, the buckle itself. Um, the buckle comes with kind of like these alligator teeth, which uh, once you get the buckle in, or once you get the belt inserted and lock that in, that's gonna lock it in. And it comes with some Allen wrenches that you're gonna loosen up and then tighten down on the belt itself. And once again, here's a, another little view uh, of the mechanical. It's got a nice large lever that's easy to find, easy to operate with no sharp edges on it so that it's easy to use and it's gonna be comfortable to wear. Now, some of the things that I've noticed, because I've been wearing mine for about two weeks, is you can wear it all day long and because of the way these are all contoured, you're not gonna get any sharp points that stick you in the gut um, getting in and out of the car. So they've done a nice job of uh, putting a radius or, you know, kind of dehorning these so that you can wear these all day and it's, it's not uncomfortable to wear. Um, and if you are EDC and you carry in the car, you're gonna notice right away if this is sticking you. Now, they come with extra screws, their own Allen wrench, which is nice because little screws, they're kind of pesky and easy to lose. They also come with, with this, which is almost like a rash guard. And if you had um, a, a holster that had, you know, some si type of metal clips that went on it, you could put the metal clips over this to actually protect the belt from, you know, uh, on and off with different types of metals. It, it also comes with, and once this goes on, it's pretty secure. They also give you a, a little keeper uh, for, for tucking this in. You know, if you want to run the other belt through it, and it's got a, a Velcro adjustment on the back, so you can adjust this. So if you want to go through two layers of belt and tuck it in, that'll work. Um, one of the things they also included with the package, and I think it's pretty cool, is they actually have their own belt hanger. So you can hang these things up in the closet just like this, and it holds your belt nice and secure, straight up and down. You're not gonna lose it in the closet. Now, it's, it's worth noting that, you know, Core basically just sent us two of their um, tactical models in the black and also in the Coyote, which I'm wearing right now. But they also come uh, with models that are with leather. So if you're not so much of a blue collar guy and a white collar guy or a white collar guy, and you are going to be dressed up every day and going to work in a suit, you can get a leather belt, which is not going to stand out as much as say a tactical belt, which is going to complete your outfit a whole lot better. So, you know, I don't mind saying that after wearing the core belt for a couple of weeks, it's, it's my go-to. Um, and and I'm, I'm a happy camper because I know that we'll see how long this lasts, but if it does wear out, I'll be replacing a core belt with a new core essentials belt. Now, what we're gonna do in a few minutes is we're gonna load up so that you can actually see how these operate. Um, from the holster and see how the, the belt actually operates under load and uh, during live fire. We were safe and clear. Now we're not. Safety on, return to holster. 
I'm going to put seven rounds down range, alternating between the targets and finish up with uh, the water jug. So with the 1911, make sure that you always put the safety back on before you return to the holster. Also make sure that when you draw, you have your finger um, high up on the holster so that when it drags out, it comes right up onto the frames like so. Come out onto target, safety off. Okay, safety on, return to holster. Now one of the things I noticed was there wasn't a whole lot of movement or drag of the holster when I was actually doing the draw. Do this again. Safety on, return to holster. Okay, I'm not seeing a whole lot of feeling much drag from the holster. It, it, it seems to come out pretty, uh, pretty slick. Uh, I'm not feeling a whole lot of movement in the belt. Once again, safety off, good grip, soft and easy on the trigger. Good hit. Safety on, return to holster. Always look down at your holster to make sure that the muzzle's going in safely. Um, most accidents happen at the holster. So taking it out is one thing, but when you put it back, you definitely want to be looking at where you're putting the pistol. So once again, we're going to draw. Safety off. Good solid hit. Safety on. Back to holster. Safety on, return to holster. One more time on the second red. Solid hit. Okay. Last one is going to be on the uh, water bottle. All right. Safety off. And now it's leaking. I was expecting something a little bit more dramatic, but I hit the thing, so I'm going to call that good. Anyway, we'd sure like to thank our good friends at Core Essentials for sending out a couple examples of the belt. We also want to thank all of our subscribers who keep tuning in. So, on behalf of Shoot of the Series, I'm Edwin Thorell. Y'all take care.